like a madman. I am driving around the local industrial estate looking and I think found there we go exactly what I'm looking for and I look like a madman collecting it but that is what I'm looking for mole hills right so first things first today we're gonna to mix up some ground bait the ground bait I'm gonna go with is census lake I'm gonna put that into the bucket As I do that, just pass it through a middle as I do it, see if there's some of the bigger bits. And I'm going to feed quite positive today. So I'm going to mix up quite a bit of ground bait to start off with. Just pass that through the middle to remove some of the bigger bits. So what you're left with at the bottom of a lot of ground baits is a lot of a lot of maize. This is always the first job I do when I get there because what it does by the time I've plumbed up and set up my rigs, this ground bait should just be ready to go through the riddle. So I've removed, let's see, some of the bigger pieces. Because we're all after silverfish today. If it was the carp, I'd leave a lot of that in. I'll just chuck that up the bank. I'm going to mix into that some of the black lake. What that's going to do is um, give the mix some colour. So as you can see there, we've got two different colours of ground bait. When you mix them together, it just gives that bit of darkness to the mix. So I'm going to put all, about a quarter of a bag of that in. And mix it all together. And always mix dry ingredients together to begin with what you get is a base mix that's a lot just a tad darker all right so as you can see there finished mixing the ground bait and it's just over wet so it sticks just so it sticks on your hands a bit because it will absorb more water in the next half hour before we start fishing so that's the swim for, for the day and I'm going to aim where you can see that shadow of a tree. It's about, I'd say, about five foot deep, four or five foot deep, and it doesn't really get much deeper. And I'm going to try and fish about there, just fishing maybe half a float over depth because then if I flick just past that to say there and just on bottom. So it gives me scope all over that area where the tree is, all the dark water there. That's where I'm going to feed my ground bait and try and fish over. And then obviously when you get a fish, you can swing it into hand. Today, we're going to be fishing with ground bait and the whip to try and catch some silvers. The whip that I'm using is a just a cheap 2XL 5 meter whip that I had from a kid when I used to fish the canal. Weighs a ton, but it'll do the job today. Um, I've got that fish into hand and I've got a 1.25 dyno float it's called a dyno beige down to a 1 gram olivet and two droppers of about probably a foot foot deep the float's not quite set yet and say so you've probably seen before this shot then I'm just going to mix the ground bait before I've done anything else and I'm going to get back to that now and get it sorted for the session ahead it's had about half an hour to settle right I've just come back to the ground bait now and as you can see from before it's a lot drier it's a lot drier mix now so what I'm going to do first of all is put that in the tray it all out the bottom I'm going to pass all that a bit of time through the middle to remove any of them fine lumps out of it what you're looking for is like a fine a fine ground bait and a base and a carrier for all your 
bait that you're going to put into it because today um, I am going to load this with pinky so I want a nice caviar that's heavy to get to the bottom because I'm fishing that olivet that's going to you know I'm not going to be catching fish on the drop I want to get the fish on the bottom and feeding on the bottom there is bream in here so obviously trying to target them fish on the bottom is what the plan is going to be what I'll do is I'll put the rest through the mix but as you can see there you're left with a, a finer ground bait when you squeeze it and it just breaks up like that so I'll put the rest of, the, of it through the mix and then we'll put the, the molehill soil in and get the mix ready right so what we've got there is the ground bait through the riddle and to that as you can see it's quite a light mix I'm going to add the molehill soil now I normally do it 50-50 but they were very wet this morning so I couldn't get a lot so put a bit in mix it round you can see already just that little bit how much it's darkening the mix up so I think just from experience that this will take all the molehill soil that I've collected this morning quite easily what you've got there now give it a good mix Compared to before, is a ground bait that's a lot darker, but it doesn't carry as much food content because the the, the molehill soil will dilute the ground bait. But it's also got that extra weight that when it goes down in the water, it'll stick together and break down on the bottom. So yeah, got an excellent ground bait there, 50/50 mix. If you want to try fishing a river on the ground on ground bait. It's a nice simple mix to make up and best of all the molehill soil is free so yeah get this ready now and we'll have a look at what we're going to add to it to fish with so what i've done there that's my initial mix that's five handfuls of the ground bait in there and that's going to be my initial feed to that i've got some um pinkies so i'm gonna put them in a good mix round and obviously you've got to be quick here because you've got to get this they'll start breaking the balls that you make up so get your bait in like that obviously i've got cheshire particle hemp and with there being a lot of roach in here a lot of a lot of fish you want to draw them in so i am going to put a lot of bait in this initial mix do some more um, because I'm not planning on feeding by hand um, with these baits these are this is very light but there's a lot of food in that I draw the fish in as you can see you've got a mix there that's laid and heavy with um, maggots and hemp So first cast of the day, um, low in the rig in. There we go. The first fish of the day. A small little roach. As you've seen there, it's not took long to come, even though we fed that amount of ground bait, it's not took long for the bite to come. Let the olive it fall, fall through the water and then lower the float.
and there we go just showing you can feed that amount of bait to start with but the fish come straight away to it now it's two fish in about what a minute after feeding that amount of ground bait so the key today is going to be feeding the swim correctly knowing when i need to top up and to keep the bites coming and not overfeed the swim um, topping up is the key to this type of fishing five big balls at the start and we're going to fish it till i think the bites have slowed up enough to refeed i'm going to trickle the odd bit of maggot over the top because i think the fall of the water the bait through the water will help today get this guy back and get back to it So we're basically doing flicking out to where the ground bait is, let the olivet sink and then just drop the flow in slowly under tension. Literally five or six maggots over the top. Because you don't want the fish to come up off bottom where your ground bait is and a tiny little pinch of hemp. And before I've had a chance to feed the hemp, it's a fish on. And there we go another roach it's the same as if, when I talked about the stick float fishing and the, the bolo fishing you get into a, a ribbon with it and basically don't you're trying to work out now when you need to refeed to keep the fish there so flick it in let the olivet sink drop the float in Pinch of maggot, and a bit of hemp. Go for the bite, there we go. Location. A different, different fish this time. Let's go off the hook. different fish this time, a gudgeon and that in itself can be a sign that you might need to feed when you get smaller stamp of fish in the swim are all signs that you're looking for that you need to top up the swim so we're about an hour and a half in the session now um, been feeding over the top with um, the, the hemp but in the last 10 minutes the quality of the fish has gone down dramatically so I'm going to mix up two or three balls and put them in and refeed this swim and see what effect that does and I say I've fished this river before and done well just on maggot and, and hemp this is a bit about a bit of learning for me but certainly in the last 10 minutes the size of the fish has reduced dramatically And there we go after feeding that ground bait as you can see it's slightly better it's brought a slightly better fish but it does seem it does seem that that is 
the way to go. You know, fish the ground bait out, and then when the smaller fish move in, just put on another few balls in maybe. Right, obviously one of the problems of fishing the tip is, is if you hit a better fish, and this is probably, this is a better fish this. It's not come up yet, I've not seen what it is. But as you can see, it's got the flick tip right over. And this is the hazard of not using the pole. As I say, it's going to be difficult. You've got to try and play the fish out. As I say, it's good to see that the better fish have come. But you just haven't got it. If that fish goes, you just all you've got is the line that you've got, really. And it is a nice fish. I'm going to try and concentrate on getting it in. Because he had money on 1 7 bottom. So, see if we can get this fish in. Right, and there we go. Nice bream. A fantastic fight on that little small whip, <laughs> most definitely. Um, yeah, put the camera down. It took me about a minute to get it in, but it didn't half go. I'm showing that that ground bait, that ground bait is working. And it's got me thinking now, do I put some more in to keep these? Because this will be a shoal fish, this. There could be more of them. And if we get a shoal of these in, we could have a very special day. A hair raising day on that whip, but a very special day. So let's get this guy in the net and see what the next few bites bring and then we'll think about whether we risk an all or nothing approach. So what about two and a half hours in now I've fed the swim twice with balls of ground bait and the fish are still coming we'll have a very good and that's at the end of this continues most certainly but yeah fantastic days fishing Well into the afternoon now and it's still a bite of chuck. Just feeding maggot over the top and you know sprinkling the hemp every every cast. It's kept the bites coming. So getting into a routine is, is the key. Feeding a big ball of ground bait every time it's died down, every time I've had a gudgeon and stuff like that few good gin of a feather ball of ground bait and just feeding maggot and casting over the hemp over the top it's kept the roach coming so just missed another bite then and as you'll see from some of the footage where I'm, I'm just you know leaving the camera to run it's, it's been a fantastic days fishing on the on the whip and just shows what you can catch doesn't have to cross the earth. A bit of ground bait, some pinkies, and um, as I say, I've had this since I was a kid, so it's cheap as chips. So one question that keeps coming up a lot is what hook lengths I use and hooks. Um, I always use Bay of Pearl on, um, one seven and, and two one bottom for me river fishing for silvers. And if I'm just going for roach, it's always a whisker barb, um, I'd size 18. If I'm chub fishing, then I do, do, I do use the cameras and animals because they are just a fantastic strong hook and you need that extra stability, I think, when you're targeting the chub. And there's another roach coming close in on the whip. 
That's a, a lovely example of the species. You can see why there's so many cormorants on here when the fish are like that. And that is what today has all been about. Lovely roach coming on the whip. It's been a fantastic day's fishing. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And the mark on it. Let's get it back. Alright, uh, the session's coming to an end now and just upped into another better fish. I don't know what it is, I think it's another bream, I think. Certainly putting a bend. I don't know if you can see that. A bend in the in the whip. Go. Try and play it in. Yeah, it's another bream or a hybrid. On the whip, just got to take your time and play it out. Let's see if we can get this fish in the net. And there we go. There's that fish that you just see me playing. Um, looks like a Bream, I don't think it's good. I don't think it is a hybrid, I think it's just a normal young bream. But yeah, it's in immaculate condition. It keeps slapping, so I won't hold them up too high, just keep tensing up. And that's the second one of the session. And yeah, it's come when the when it has clouded over, so I don't know whether it's the fact it's clouded over or the fish are moving in on the ground bait now, but it is coming towards the end of the session, so time to get this guy back and see if we can pick up a few more fish before the end. And there we go. Nice skimmer. Little skimmer bream. To end the session on. Final fish of the session. Let's have a look at that final net and see how we've got on. It's been a very, very good day on the bank. I can't wait to see what's in that net. Let's get that guy in there with the rest of them. Hey, there's my Uncle Az's net. Just over 14 pound of fish. Some lovely perch, and a couple of lovely perch. Loads of nice roach. Fantastic mixed bag of fish today all on the pole and yeah, let's get these guys back. Yeah, so there's a final net, just weighed it, 39 pound, a roach, um, dace, gudgeon, some proper bream in there so it's been really hard to um, get a picture of the net because obviously I forgot my big net so we just put them down to the bottom of the keep net and trying to get the best video we can and not keep them out too long but yeah fantastic days fishing and I say what a day's fishing 39 pound to get these fish back